This is something I've never worked on before, one of these mobility scooters. My mate's got this, he said it packed up and uh, it's going to cost a fortune for him to get it looked at properly by a company, so he wondered whether I'd have a look at it for him. So let's have a look, see what we can find. Mobility scooter time, see you in a minute. Right, well, this is a 24 volt uh, mobility scooter. It's got one single motor and an electronic brake with it. And uh, I don't really know anything about this. I've never really worked on these sort of things before, but um, obviously I've got a background in ele electrical engineering and electronics, but um, I haven't got any instructions on it. I know operational manuals or whatever. I've, I've heard mixed stories on this because uh, he told me that he was driving along and the thermal cutout uh, popped out. And uh, that was the problem. And as far as I was under the understanding was that it was working. And anyway, when, I, when the, he said that uh, 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 the, bloke, the bloke who had it previous to him uh, was going to have a look at it for him. So I've got this third hand now, said he wasn't sure what it was. So that's when my mate said, can he drop it round to me? So the old boy dropped it round to me. I've had no contact with anyone with regards to what the actual fault is. So the only way I've got to look at this is as if I've just got this with no history or background to it. and just try and hopefully sort out and find out where the problem lies with it. The only thing I found out is that uh, when you turn the ignition on, it gives this audible bleeping noise. And I did look online for a similar scooter to this by the same manufacturer. And apparently pre-2004, they had a different system where it was analog, the uh, speed controls and stuff like that. And after 2004, they are uh, digital, which, which got a digital control on it. Apparently the ones pre-2004, you can check uh, resistances and that but with this one as it looks like it's a post 2004 one you can't do the checks on it with an ohm meter or multimeter so all I'm going to basically check is is the engine and not the engine sorry the engine <laughs> I'm still on, on petrol mode is the uh, the electronic motor and also the electronic brake because what's happening is when you turn the key on it's giving an audible bleep which is what they call a medium to fast audible bleep and uh, that indicates in the the brochure i found that it's a possible problem with the power loop which could be the brake or the motor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to check them two things out and uh, let's hope we can find the problem right so i've already jacked the car up jacked the car up look at me i've jacked the uh, mobility scooter up so that both wheels are off the ground and one of the problems for them audible bleeps apparently is that a lot of people leave the uh the mechanical gear selector from the gearbox in the uh, free wheeling position for example when you put it down like that that means that you can push the mobility scooter along with no problems at all and that's one of the the reasons why that sounds so that's the first thing obviously you checked make sure that brake was off so as you can see it's now in locked mode which means the gearbox is being controlled by the motor but it still makes that bleeping noise so that's one thing i've able to eliminate now one thing i have noticed here if we have a look this is the gearbox uh, this is the, the motor, the single uh, motor there, and there's the electronic brake on the end of it. There's our controller. Now, apparently, I've been told that this has had a new controller in it. Again, I'm only going by here, so I don't know anything about this myself personally. If I look over here, here's the thermal cutout. I've already checked that. That's working correctly. I've put a multimeter across that, and uh, we're getting voltage at either side of that, so that obviously means that that's, that's operating correctly. So, basically, what happens is with this electronic brake, there's a cable, two cables that come from it, this is basically a solenoid and uh, this acts like a sort of a, not, a, not a clutch but it is a solenoid which brings in two friction plates in the stationary position so when you actually operate the the speed controls up the front there that releases this brake and allows the motor to turn so that's done by two cables which come through the motor connection which is uh, down there the motor connection you, you can't probably can't see it. this is the motor 24 volt motor there's a big black and a big red cable that comes off of that and off of the solenoid there's a little black and a little red cable and they actually join via this connector here so they're, they're actually linked together and then they go obviously into the controller now what I could do is actually apply 12 volts to the solenoid and to the motor to see whether they the motor actually spins but again you can't really do that until you've actually removed the solenoid or actually applied voltage onto the solenoid as well 
So I'm, I'm very limited with test leads here. I haven't got any sort of test leads or any leads made up or whatever. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's easier, is just for me to remove the drive wheel on this side. I can then get to the four screws there to take off this actual solenoid brake, so to speak, the electronic brake. And I could then apply 24 or 12 volts to this motor to see if it will rotate. So I'm going to just take the wheel off and then we'll uh, take the brake off. Must remember that bearing come out afterwards there's also by the looks of it as you can see there a handbrake as well so that little drum there as you can see with a set of brakes in it is operated all the way you can do it manually as you can see there or it goes a cable all the way up there to the actual handlebar mechanism up there so that's going to be okay but now i can gain access to these four screws here which will help make me remove the uh the actual electric brake so i'm going to take that off now all right just going to give these a, a light tap there we go, it shouldn't be too tight, but you can never tell when you've got uh, screws of different metal screwing into each other. Like these are maybe uh, steel screws going into an aluminium body, so you know, you just might get a bit of a uh, corrosion there. And uh, tapping it is always a good idea to free the threads off. Or shock the threads before you start undoing because you can with little screws like this it's very easy to chew the heads off of them with no hassle whatsoever so just saying i always do with little screws like that in different metals so once i take this off oh there's only three screws on this one i thought there was four as i say what we've got here is a little solenoid brake so there'll be a friction plate in here let's get that off There we go. So there's the motor, as you can see the motor's turning free there. Now this plate looks like there's loads of crap in here. See this might have even seized on, I don't know yet, but let's, uh, if we disconnect it. Right, okay, so what I'm thinking is, is that, as he said it cut out, on the thermal cutout, this could have seized up, which has caused that to really overload the engine, and that could have tripped it on high voltage, uh, high current sort of thing, so, uh, it's just something I'm aware of, and uh, it could be a possible problem. But uh, again, not knowing anything about these types of motors, or when I say don't know anything about them, I haven't got an instruction or a diagnosis thing, apart from uh, the little piece of information I found online about a similar scooter with the same brand, but a different model. So let me just undo this connector down here. Right, okay, so here's our solenoid brake. Let's take a closer look at this. Right, so here's the brake. And as I say, it operates with a very strong spring in there. And by applying a current to this, it pulls the brake apart and allows the motor to free wheel. That thing there, that little hexagon thing, lines up with something on the end of the, uh, the motor. And that should basically spin once you've released that, so to speak. So... Again, I'm, I'm a bit struggling for cable connections here, so I might just try and apply 12 volts to this. I don't know whether it needs 24 volts or 12 volts, to be honest with you. But I'll try 12 anyway, so let me go and get some jump leads, and then we'll try and put some voltage on this. Right, okay, I've got a couple of little jump leads I've made up. Uh, so, maybe if I can just get these in there, and make some sort of contact. <laughs> it's easier said than done, isn't it? Oh, that's what happens when you haven't got the right stuff. Not geared up for this sort of stuff, you see. So, just connect this up to the battery. Again, as I say, I haven't got a good selection of uh, electrical test leads, which is uh, something which you would normally have if you was doing this work regular. Which I'm not. I'm more mechanical now than electrical. Well, I heard a click, but nothing happened. Right, now, I believe... I can hear an electrical clicking, but that spring isn't doing anything. So I'm of the belief that uh, this solenoid is frozen, which is not releasing the motor, which is, could be why it's allowed the thermal trip to trip out. So what I'm going to do is strip this down, and let's see if we can actually get this freed off. Now, as I say, I don't know whether this is 12 or 24 volt. 
all I know is is that I could hear it trying to do something but it wasn't doing anything I've got to be careful I'll keep my hand over the top of this I should have safety goggles on really I don't know how powerful this spring is here this side here well, what I could probably do is actually get a clamp just to hold that in place bear with me so basically when anything's under spring tension really you don't want to take any chances with bits that could fly out so just by holding that in the center just takes the power off of our three little screws and they are three little screws as well so all right three so let's just unwind that very gently and it should just start to come up as you see i don't think it's a very long spring but it's enough to uh, what's that just dropped out there something's just dropped out there beware of that i think it's a little location pin there look yeah little location pin there's three of them Right, I think that's totally off tension now, so let's move that to one side. And I want these to come off in order, so that goes first. There's a friction plate there, as you can see. In fact, if I put it that way around, that's the way it's come off. Lift that up, that's the friction plate there, look. There. That comes off next. There's a bottom friction plate there. That's three. You've got these little dowels here, there's three of them. Which sit obviously in them which is for the screws good to go through by the looks of it right now this is the bit this is the little spring and the little solenoid motor so to speak so what I have found out is that you can test the resistance of them and then anything from 30 to sort of 60 ohms on the 200 ohm scale seems to be the right reading so let's go and get a reading 200 ohm scale and we're looking hopefully between something between 30 and 60 ohms on this, you can see that. There we go, 47, that's perfect. So that's there's no problem with that at all. There's no reason why that shouldn't be working now. Apart from if it was stuck or free, uh, corroded up or something, so. Right, well I'm just going to screw this up anyway, you haven't got to see, that could be a bit fiddly, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, maybe 12 volts, I've just tried that across the 12 volt battery again, and it doesn't seem like it's got enough pull to pull this in, so I do believe this is going to be a 24 volt uh, solenoid, so what I can do is actually connect the negative to one of the batteries, so the positive from this battery here comes down along, round, comes out of there, up through the actual thermal overload, and then goes back down the negative to the next battery and then the positive from that battery comes back and that connects straight on to your controller so that means that both of these 12 volt batteries are wired in what you call series in other words like a chain so although you've got two individual 12 volt batteries from there to this terminal here now because they're both linked together we should have 24 volts and let me show you so each individual battery I don't know if you can see that or not let's put that there so across one battery, just on its own. Yeah, you've got 13.3 volts. Can you see that? Is that any better? So across that battery, for example, you've got 13.3 volts. Across this battery on its own, you've got 13.3 volts. But if you go from the negative on here to where the batteries are a chain, daisy chain, so to speak, onto this red cable here, you should have double that voltage if I can get on there yeah. as you can see we've got 26.7 volts there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my solenoid positive wire up to that terminal there so let me just put the negative on first right well I can hear clicking but I can't see any I can't see this solenoid breaking Because what should happen, that hexagon shape there, I should be able to spin then. If I just click that on there for the minute. This should be free now. It's not, it's still solid, you see, look. Close look around the actual electronic electric motor here. Uh, I say I've got the cables coming in the bottom, but I'm a bit concerned about this end. 
simple reason being there seems to be this is obviously where the brushes connect here top and bottom I can feel the bottom one which has got a normal brush cap on it but this thing here there's some sort of bolt in there and it's been cut off of a hacksaw so I don't actually know what's gone on there and for me to take this motor out I mean I could put 24 volts or 12 volts on the motor connections here and see if it turns because I've just put a direct battery feed on it I might try that first but I don't know what this is. I may put some voltage on that first just to do a little test to see if it does spin with just 12 volts on. So let's do that first quickly. Right, so the motor is working. That's, that, that's only 12 volts, don't forget. Right, well now I'm not going to touch that now. It looks like someone's made some sort of modification there obviously, but uh, whatever it is, it's working. So now my main concern is now that brake thing where I think I should see at least that solenoid should release this bracket there. Now what I can do is to put uh, the 24 volts onto this thing and the motor at the same time and see whether the motor turns with this in situ then. If it doesn't then I know that the brake is not releasing, holding it on and that will be the problem. So. Um, I'm going to set this back up now, bolt this back on now that we've seen the actual motor turn and then we'll take it from there once we've applied voltage to both of these things together see if the motor still turns. Right okay then so we've got the brake back on right okay so I need to jump from that cable there over to this cable over that side right that's the jumpers in so now I need to apply voltage to this and what that will do it will put current or voltage rather onto both sets of terminals all right I think I'm on there so when I touch this onto this one here that should give us 24 volts to both right okay so I just want to check now whether or not I've got voltage to the brake because we're still getting that bleeping noise as you can probably see here look that indicates there's a problem with the brake or motor circuit so let's try this now yeah I don't think the brakes releasing we're getting the voltage at the the brake so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take these three screws out again and seeing if that makes any difference so let's just quickly do that and if this then works with the brake the electronic brake off then our electronic brake is obviously sticking for some reason as you can see with that electronic brake off we can turn the wheels because the brake's not on so we're still going to get that bleeping noise but let's see if it turns now there we go sorted so our electronic brake is holding things up see if it's going reverse yeah, there we go. Ready? So there we go. That's our problem. The electronic brake isn't releasing for some reason. And that's why we're getting that audible noise. So I would suggest. we've solved the problem although we're not going to see the problem solved in this video unfortunately but what I'll do I'll just bolt that wheel back on put it all back together for the moment I'm going to take the electronic brake out because it has got a handbrake as well as we've already seen so um, I'm just going to give it a quick zoom around and uh, see if it's operate operational and if it is then we've obviously found the problem the audible bleeping is to do with the uh, the digital motor controller seeing that there is a problem with that brake so uh, we've applied 24 volts to it and I couldn't see it opening and closing as I said to you so that's obviously registering that there is a problem with that electronic uh, brake although we did have the right voltage range in it I don't know so not dealing with these before I'm not too sure so let me put it back together and let's have a little quick whip round because it worked working full stop but now hopefully we've got it going and we know where the problem lies I put everything back together put it back on because I've removed the electronic brake as you know I took it right out and took it out of course it wouldn't move would it so I've had to plug it back in so that 
the control box sees that it's there but it's still bleeping obviously but at least the the thing will run now so I'm just gonna have to cable tie it in place underneath the chassis just so that it's sort of connected let me show you as you can see I've just left it in there sort of thing with a cable tie going around it because it needed to be seen by the controller otherwise the, the motor wouldn't turn and I put all the seat back and everything so never mind so let's put this back on now like that so let's just get in it I'm going to expecting it to bleep you see look it's rolling free now but I've got the handbrake there as you can see look so just turn it on now hopefully although it's going to bleep I should be able to drive it now there we go On the handbrake there we go so we've proved the case now let's turn that off that was the problem but we've got no electronic brake on at the moment although it's still connected to the circuit it's registering it there's a problem with it there's nothing I can do about it. that's so all I'm going to do now is order up an electronic brake hey presto problem solved we know we're getting our 24 volts to the electronic brake so it's obviously a problem with that I don't know whether or not the internal bit had come adrift I think by, the, by what I can see, the, the coil inside should have been pretty static so that when the core gets the voltage in it and energises, it pulls that spring and that plate down. But I think the inside core was flapping about in there, so it might have been bonded to the body when it's just come adrift sort of thing. So I won't know that till I see a second one, uh, the new one. So I'm going to order one of them up now. Call the job done for this. You haven't got to really see that in the rest of the video. We've diagnosed the problem on this, and hopefully if you've got one of these scooters with a very similar sort of problem, I'm hoping this video would help you. Anyway, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this little one, and I'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.